Good morning. My name is James Little from Mass Spectral Interpretation Services. In today's webinar, I would like to discuss changes in the EI NIST 23 search program version 3. The list of changes in the NIST 23 search from the user manual are shown below as can be found on 23. I will not go through these changes in detail at this point in time, but will discuss them in later parts of the webinar. Note this time the manual has been significantly improved in that hyperlinks are put in blue within the manual to easily navigate between the topics, and I've put a copy of this user manual on my webpage. There has been a large increase in the number of EI spectra in NIST 23. Approximately 40,000 new spectra were measured and added with the retention index values. Here is the NIST process for obtaining new EI reference spectra. It's been in place for several years now and it first employs a very comprehensive compound selection process looking at a variety of databases. Then the compounds are acquired. The spectra are measured within the mass spec laboratory at NIST. They're organized by structure, and it goes through many evaluations, which is shown on the right side over here, employing software tools such as MS Interpreter and the hybrid search. I won't go through this in detail, but there's an excellent presentation on my website that talks about the process. Watch the current webinar for version 3 changes and then view additional videos on my website to complete the training that you will need to identify unknowns. The other part of the video might show some screens that have old pictures for maybe version 2.4, but the content is still very much needed to understand how to use the software to identify unknowns. Before I show you the changes in version 3, I want to review the software as it appeared in version 2.4. So one of the biggest changes you will see if you go to the library search options menu and pull down the types of identity searches, you'll see that all of the searches are there including the EI and the MSMS. And also for the similarity, you'll have all the choices there for both EI and MSMS. And one more thing, the MSMS menu will appear at all times. I now have opened the version 3 software. And the first change you'll see, if you go to File, you'll see there's another option here called Select Spectrum Type. Let's open it, and now you'll see that you can tell the software whether you'll be doing EI or Tandem or All. So EI would only show the options that are found for EI. The Tandem would show the ones only shown for Tandem and all would show both the EI and the tandem in one menu. So let's simplify the menu for doing EI by selecting that option and saying OK. Now when you go to the library search options, the menu will be highly simplified. If you pull down the identity type searches, you'll get the EI for normal, which is the low resolution or nominal mass. And you'll see the other one is for EI high resolution, which they've changed the name here. Also, if you go to the similarity, you'll only see those for the EI hybrid, the simple, and the EI neutral loss. So none of the MSMS or tandem options. And if you look at the top on one of the tabs, the MSMS tab is no longer there because you don't need it for doing EI analysis. The other big change you'll notice is you have a pull down menu for the type of score that you will get, the method. Before you had radio buttons to select some of these, so the full spectrum search would be the standard identity search that one would normally use. The next would be the impurity tolerance search. That would be for doing mixtures. So if your unknown had extra peaks because it's a mixture present in it, when you do the search, it would not be penalized against the match based on those peaks that are extra. So it's good for doing mixtures. The final is a new option. It's called the partial spectrum search, and it's somewhat the opposite of the impurity tolerant or reverse search in that if your unknown was absent some peaks when it does the library search, its match would not be penalized because those peaks were absent. 
This was probably, or this is probably less useful in EI, though you might find some options that would be good for doing an EI search, but it's very useful for doing MSMS in which the library spectra are not quite as reproducible because they're based on energy and they might be missing some peaks. So you might find that useful for doing that type search. Now let's do a search. You'll note that when you open the new version of the software, they've added many more compounds or spectra in the spec list to give you a chance to test the software. Let's pick the one that says cocaine that came from another library and we'll search it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come up to our file. You'll notice they do give you some settings that you can put in that select the right libraries. And the EI one's a good one to demonstrate the software. But you will need to create your own as you add your own libraries to make it easier to use the software and keep it set up in the mode that you like. But let's just do settings EI. Save the current configuration. Let's don't. Uh, we'll come up to the library search options. And we'll just see what we have. It's going to do an EI search the normal, full spectrum search. All the settings look pretty good in the method. If you go to the libraries, you'll see that it's picked the appropriate libraries for doing EI searches, the main live and the rep live. It even picks the right ones for doing the structure search. So all of that looks good. So we're okay. We're ready to start our search. So we've got cocaine selected, number spectrum number five in the list, and we'll say go to start the search. It searches all the libraries and gives the results in the bottom pane here, sorted by the match factor. Of course, you can step through those, and they'll change the structure in the middle compared to the top one in this middle pane, and you'll have the best one in the library on the bottom. So it hasn't really changed anything from version 2.4 at this point. What I like to do is right-click on the bottom and change the properties. I don't find it very useful to use up my space on my screen for the, the intensity list, so I'm going to get rid of that. I like to wrap the text around so I can see things that might go off the screen on the right, and I'll say OK. And now I get the display on the bottom. Let's take a closer look at the hit results. So if we look at the results of the cocaine search and go to the bottom, we have a match of 947. If you look to the right, the display will be very similar to that as shown in the version 2.4 in that you'll have the unknown on the top. You'll have the comparison of the known and the best hit in the middle pane here. And at the bottom window, you'll see the results for the number one hit. And so if you look at it, the first thing that will change is now when you click on the inchy key that represents the structure, it takes you to the middle window as before. But when it does the search, it does not go to PubChem. It goes to the Google search. And you can see the inchy key has been searched to bring up all the possibilities. PubChem will be one of the possibilities within this list, but you get much more information in this approach. Often, when I'm looking at things like this, I would like to go to images and just bring up the spectrum or the structure for cocaine as opposed to the uh, regular hit list. So it just makes it a little easier to view in my opinion, in some cases. So I think this is a big improvement over just going to PubChem. There's much more information available to the user in this approach. Now if you scroll further through the information for the best hit at the bottom, you'll see as before the number of synonyms, there are many different names for cocaine. But the next thing you'll notice is the presence of other databases such as Wikipedia, Drug, etc. So you have all these different databases, which are a very nice addition to the software, a much more extensive list. And if you go over to the results window on the bottom left side, you'll see another column called DBS. And this just shows you the number of hits, in this case 31, that are present in these different databases. So that's very useful. And in many cases, let's say not in this case, but if you had two spectra that were very similar in the hit list, but you weren't sure which one it is, it's always best to look at the one with the most databases and consider it first because it's more likely to be the identity of the compound. So this can be very handy and is a very nice change in the new software in version 3 versus 2.4. NIST has also made a list of these databases in PDF format, 
And you can see the abbreviation here. It has some information about the type of description of the database and some links to that database. So I put this on my website, and you can find it in the section on a separate page within my website with the manuals for the NIST software. Another new feature of the library software is if you go over an IN in a spectrum and you hover it over it and it's not labeled in the display, it'll show you what the mass to charge value is for that ion. So one other search I want to do, I want to go up and search this number one to illustrate something else that's been added to the software. We'll search fentanyl carbamate and we'll go and search that. We'll get the best hit for it. It's the main, it doesn't have it in any databases here. But let's go down and look what we got at the bottom here for the results. We have different synonyms that NIST has added. And this is actually one that was run at the NIST laboratory. So this experimental RI retention index value is one that is attained at NIST. If you scroll down, you can see the method that was used and the person that the NIST labs that acquired this spectrum. Another thing that has been added is this artificial intelligence RI, retention index, and they calculate these with a new computer program that's very much more representative of the compounds that they found by looking at things that they know. They found it's just a better way to estimate the RI for compounds. And so that's been added for everything in the library because it doesn't really require that the compound be run at NIST. They just calculated it for all the compounds. So you might find that useful in your work. The other thing is it's only got two methods here, but you can only got one method here, but you can sometimes have a lot of different methods. So if you want to open it up a little bit, it's only here if I go to properties, I right clicked on the bottom window and it's only got two, but some of them could have a lot of different methods that they got out of the literature. So if you only see two, uh, you might be others and you'll see something at the bottom of the screen that it, when you scroll down that indicates there are others. You could go open this up a little bit to display more if you find it useful. The last thing I would like to show you is the changes in the name search. But before I show you the version 3, let's go back to the search 2.4. You see it's 2.4 at the top. I'll go to the names. I'm going to search main live, and I want to search 4-hydroxy benzoic acid methyl ester. So if you start trying to type that in, I can't put any more than about 16 characters. You could get rid of the numbers if you wanted to by clicking on the A to Z and only do numbers. You know, it also strips out spaces and dashes and commas, things like that also. But still, you can't put in a very full name when you're trying to search something. So this is a big limitation in the version 2.4 software. So now let's see what the improvements have been made in the version 3 software. I'll go to the bottom and pick names. I'll put in my name again for hydroxy benzoic acid methyl ester. And as I type that, I had some spaces, I had some dashes, but it just ignores those. I didn't want to keep the numbers, so I didn't click on A to Z so it would ignore the numbers. I wanted the numbers because I want a specific isomer. And now you can see that it let me type in the whole name and find it. So now I found the exact compound I want. See the structure over to the side. But the other big improvement in the software, if you notice in the bottom window, it has the spectrum of the compound, but then it allows you to easily see the replicates for that compound. It shows the derivatives for that compound for all of them. So it's very useful. You can look at what derivatives might be in the library, plus to see the diversity in the mass spectra. Sometimes NIST has picked the best spectrum, but sometimes that could be somewhat subjective, so it's nice to be able to see the replicates to see if you agree. So in summary, I hope you'll find this webinar that I've created on the changes in the NIST version 3 software useful in your work. As I said before, the changes in the software are shown in the first webinar, but you'll still have to use parts 1 through 6 to fully learn how to use the software to identify unknowns. There will be some screens in those latter parts, one through six, that might have some old screenshots, but I think after you know what to look for, really the concepts 
of the library search have not changed. NIST has just tried to make it easier to use in this particular version 3. I want to dedicate this webinar to Sandy Markey. His input was critical in creating this version of the EI library, and Sandy will be missed by the NIST group. He has a lifetime career in mass spectrometry and had many contributions to the field.